So we're here in Intel's demo room where they are showing concretely that they are not ready to roll over just yet. Their much delayed 10 nanometer processors are finally ready to start shipping in volume and they've even gone as far as to bring out some demo units that are running the chips. Now, most of them um, actually have their batteries intentionally drained so that snoopy people like me, pardon the pun, um, can't, you know, go poke around in the task manager or anything like that because they're not talking about exact SKUs, but they are giving us a pretty decent high-level overview of what we can expect. They're going to have chips anywhere from 9 watts to 28 watts, up to 4.1 gigahertz turbo with 4 cores and 8 threads, but Honestly, that's not even really the main story here. It's what we're getting aside from the CPU cores that makes up the substance of this announcement. This video is brought to you by Be Quiet. Their new Pure Base 500 starts at $70 and is packed with a ton of features. You can learn more about it at the link in the video description. First up, we've got Thunderbolt 3. Now, Thunderbolt 3 isn't really anything new. I mean, here, this is a more than year old Ultrabook with Thunderbolt 3 that I use as my daily driver. The difference is that Thunderbolt used to have much larger penalties in terms of its power consumption and its cost to implement in a design. So now with Ice Lake 10 nanometer processors, you're gonna have up to four Thunderbolt 3 ports integrated directly into the CPU. This saves us power and gives us more flexibility in terms of the implementation. So instead of having to put a discrete Thunderbolt 3 chip separate from the CPU over here that these ports then share, for example, it's all going to run off the CPU, and each one of the up to four ports gets the full 40 gigabit per second bandwidth. Furthermore, because of the improvements they've made to their integrated graphics, those Thunderbolt 3 ports are now going to be capable of natively powering 5K 60 Hz displays. Now, one of the first things that I asked is, hold on a second, guys, what do you mean Thunderbolt 3? I thought you turned Thunderbolt 3 over to the USB guys, and it's USB 4 now. And they went, well, okay, yes, USB 4 architecturally can have all of the good stuff of Thunderbolt 3, but there's a lot of flexibility in the implementation. So USB 4 on, say, for example, like a mobile device is not going to be a full fat experience. So the Thunderbolt 3 branding is still going to exist for fully featured USB 4, I don't know, whatever, best in class experiences, and they're gonna continue certifying products to make sure that they work as well as they can. So if you're a content creator, for example, with a 1600 megabyte per second SD Express card, you might wanna check for Thunderbolt 3 instead of USB 4 so that you know you're getting the full performance. All of this, of course, remains to be seen because we don't know how people are gonna implement USB 4 yet. Back to graphics for a moment here. Intel's not saying, at least I can't get anyone to, to, that I can quote on this, that their Gen 11 onboard graphics are the biggest generational leap forward that they've had yet in terms of iGPU performance, but it's gotta be darn close. So Gen 11 compared to Gen 9, we skipped Gen 10, I don't know what happened there, it doesn't matter. So they're saying it is a 2x improvement. Not every one of the upcoming Ice Lake chips is going to feature the same level of onboard graphics. They've got their Iris Pro branding, as well as their Intel HD graphics branding, and we don't know exactly which chips are gonna get which. But what I can say is I have never seen CSGO running this smoothly on Intel onboard graphics, and they're even saying that 1080p Fortnite is going to be a very attainable experience, even though they couldn't get permission to run Fortnite here. The even bigger thing here, though, is that in their investor day briefing, they were also talking about a potential 2x uplift again on the next generation. So we are looking at up to a four times improvement in onboard graphics performance over a span of just a couple of years. You know the whole thing where Intel's building a discrete graphics division? It wouldn't surprise me to see some of that next gen graphics make its way into a discrete card at some point. They're certainly working on the building blocks. The next big thing is integrated Wi-Fi 6. Now, if you guys checked out the primer that we collaborated with Cisco on quite recently, we talked about the benefits of Wi-Fi 6. In a nutshell, you do get slightly faster speed, but that's not really what it's about. It's about significantly lower latency, especially when there are lots of devices or there are lots of things happening with the network at the same time. So you can see the demo behind me is a latency demo while transferring a file in the background and trying to stream video at the same time. 
Obviously, Wi-Fi 6 is significantly outperforming Wi-Fi 5 here, but if you're familiar with the technology, that's not really a surprise. The big surprise is that every 10 nanometer Ice Lake CPU has Wi-Fi 6 on board, so you don't have to rely on the actual manufacturer of your system to go and purchase a discrete chip at potentially a higher cost to implement this technology. It's gonna be everywhere, and that's really important. And finally, of course, we've got everyone's favorite industry buzzword right now, AI. Now, between some new instruction sets, some dedicated hardware, and the more powerful GPU, Intel is talking about up to a 2.5x performance uplift in AI workloads. So things like uh, noise reduction, uh, suppressing background noise on a Skype call, uh, things like recognizing people. Apparently, it wants me to do some bicep curls. Not holding any weights, but... Uh, Hopefully, that's, hopefully that doesn't matter for the sake of the demo. Uh, image retouching, and then this is a really cool demo over here. So using this 3D convert software, uh, our Intel demo, you know, uh, Vanna, thank you, is just dragging a PNG over here, creating a 3D model out of this thing in, how long does it take? About 20 seconds. 20 seconds, not too shabby. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop that into a 3D scene. Here we go. Wait for it. Bam. Now, obviously, it's going to require some touch-ups, but this is something that wouldn't have been possible on previous generation mobile computers. Really cool stuff. Speaking of really cool, this message from our sponsor. The Be Quiet PureBase 500K starts at $70, so it's like an entry-level price point, but it's compact, it's got sound-insulated panels, it includes two of their Pure Wings 140mm fans, it's got options for 360mm radiator mounting, and cable management under the power supply shroud or behind the SSD covers. It's got easy-to-remove dust filters for the front, top, and bottom, and is available in black, white, and gray starting in September 2019. So check it out at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If you dislike this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. When you'll actually be able to get a 10th gen uh, notebook. Well, not for, not for a little bit, but whatever. We'll put some other kind of cool link down there. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should definitely join.